Okay, so now I'm going to talk briefly about some of the various protection disciplines and how they're different, because we need to keep this in mind uh, as we go forward. Generally speaking, for the later part of adolescence, so we're going to do things roughly the same for the first part of our bite development, pre-teething, teething, and early part of adolescent phase. But we're going to hit a spot, depending on the puppy, uh, during later adolescence and definitely in a young adulthood, where we're going to specialize in specific disciplines for most people. Most people are going to do a Schutzen dog. They're going to do a ring sport, a suit sport dog. They're going to do a police dog or something, right? And so we'll talk primarily about those. And so instead of talking about all the specific disciplines, KNPV, Belgian ring, French ring, Mondia ring, Schutzen, uh, police work, uh, the variety of different disciplines that they have, uh, we're going to talk more about suit sports. Schutzender IPO and police work, right? Because they all have slightly different goals as we go forward. Now, our early training is geared just towards building confidence and giving the dog what we call a well-rounded biting education, right? So sort of the liberal arts education of bite work, right? We want this dog to be very familiar uh, with a variety of different surfaces, targeting areas, places to work, different stressors of various kinds, and come out of that a confident, motivated biting dog that understands some basic things. At that point, depending on the discipline we're gonna do, we're gonna specialize more. And the big differences are in Schutzen, for instance, IPO, it's done on a sleeve, it's an external sleeve, it always has a jute cover, and it can be slipped to the dog at various times throughout the dog's life, even though the sleeve is not slipped to the dog during a competition, which means that I can reinforce that dog at various points during its life while stressing it by letting it have the equipment, by rewarding it with a slip of the equipment and allowing it to possess and hold and carry that equipment. So that allows me to do certain things with that dog, to stress that dog in a certain way and then reinforce that, that the dog coming through that stress uh, by letting them have the equipment. With the suit sports, we do not have that luxury outside of bite development. Outside of early, early adolescence, uh, the equipment is no longer slippable, as it were. And so we, once the dog goes onto the suit, that's no longer the case. So at that point, the dog has to be satisfied through the activity of biting and fighting with the helper. But in most of the suit sports, the dog's gripping style is not being evaluated. So in Schutzen, one of the reasons that we slip the equipment a lot is to reinforce certain biting styles in the dog. And in ring sport, outside of Belgian ring, the biting styles are not evaluated. And so the, we don't have to worry as much about reinforcing the dog exactly the moment they bit a certain way, which does not mean that ring sport dogs don't bite well. There are lots of them that use their mouth beautifully exactly the way we would want them to. But there are others that don't, that pull or shake or do other things like that with their gripping style, but it's not being evaluated, so we don't have to put energy into it. But the dogs have to be satisfied by slightly different things. So we need to know that as we go forward in our development. Uh, and with our suit dogs, that means once they're on the suit, we have to find other ways to satisfy and reinforce them, which I, as the decoy, am responsible for. So how I behave when I'm being bit, how I move, how I respond to what the dog's doing is what needs to reinforce the dog instead of letting the dog have the equipment strictly as reinforcement. So we need to know that. And then we're going to run into certain disciplines. And in ring sport, the guy is always wearing a suit. So the dog can look at the decoy in any way he wants. So if the dog wants to bite the leg, he could literally stare at the leg. It's not a problem. But in Schutzen or police work, then there's a point where we want the dog's energy focused off the equipment. So my Schutzen dog, I might want him looking at the helper's face, barking at the helper, but biting the sleeve. So I need to control that picture. I need to control his energy and focus. And in police work, we definitely hit a stage in our development where I need to focus the dog off external equipment. I don't want them looking for a suit or a sleeve or something like that to bite. They need to focus on people without equipment. And so we might have different balances in our equipment versus man focus equation that we talked about earlier based on the discipline we're doing. Now, usually, again, we don't have to worry about this until late in the adolescent phase, but we still are going to have to be aware. So if I'm doing a police dog and I'm midway through my adolescent phase, the dog's biting really well, they're, they're enjoying the equipment, they're, they'll focus their energy on me if I want them to. I stop slipping and letting them carry and have the equipment so much and I focus them more on me as the source of their fight. So their energy, I agitate them more without equipment. Um, when I slip them equipment, 
we immediately redirect them off the equipment and back onto me. So that's an example of balancing them more towards the man because we don't want that dog to become obsessed with external equipment and need that as a signal to bite. In our other sport disciplines, the equipment is always there. So we don't have to worry as much about it. With a ring sport dog, the dog can look at the helper, but the helper's whole body is covered in a bite suit. He always has a bite suit. That can be a perfectly acceptable trigger. So just knowing the slight differences between these disciplines, like I'm not gonna go into great detail about the disciplines, but the idea that these disciplines are different aesthetically, what the judges are looking for, and then also in uh, what we expect the dog to perform when they finish, are different enough that we need to be aware of those differences when we're developing a dog. Because if I'm my Schutzen dog or my police dog, I develop an unhealthy obsession with the equipment, I can have problems later on. With my ring sport dog, I never really have that problem. He can be obsess as obsessed with equipment as he wants. We stop slipping it to the dog once they're on the suit, and the guy's always wearing a suit. So we're fine in that sense, and it doesn't really matter. Now, we can run into problems if I take my ring sport dog and he is looking at the work uh, in such a way that he's only reinforced by winning the equipment. So if I've slipped the equipment too long to a young dog during the adolescent phase, and now I'm trying to put them onto the suit, and their idea of winning here is winning the equipment, that dog can have big problems when I can no longer give them the equipment. So there's an example of if I overemphasize the equipment focus and satisfying the dog through possession of the equipment, I can give my ring sport dog problems when they can no longer win the equipment. So we need to keep those things in mind. So when we talk about balance, we need to know the disciplines. In the beginning, it doesn't matter very much, but as we go along through adolescence, it matters. Know the disciplines, know the differences, and know where you want your dog's energy and what aesthetic things you're looking for. I mean, what do I want this to look like when it's done? And some activities are much more aesthetically driven. Schutzen in IPO is all about what it looks like. Huh? In ring sport, not so much. It's much more about the practical nature of it. Does the dog do it? Does the dog do it when we ask him to do it? Does he catch the guy? How far did the guy get? How fast does the guy, does the dog let go? Each of those things. And so there's less of an aesthetic component, so it frees us up to focus on different details. So familiarize yourself as much as possible with those different disciplines so you know the catches. But for our purposes here, talking about bite development, it's gonna be a difference between dogs that can win and possess the equipment or dogs that we want to focus on the equipment or the man more, depending on what discipline that is.